Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hey, Cordell. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Hot, hot, uh, hot. <laughs> Hi, not by might nor by power. Hi, Tasha. Hi, Miss Latoya Renee. Hello, hello. I'm waiting for Dr. Shanika to hop on so I can bring her in. Hi, a little dash of color. It's a cute name. Hey, um, is that Shawana? Hey, girl. Hi, Brandilyn J. Hi, and J. Hi, Jazzy CC. K Brady, K Brody837. Hello, hello. Dr. Shanika's gonna be on here momentarily. So today, um, we're gonna touch on BMI. BMI is, uh... oh good, Tasha. Hi, Anita. There she is. There's the woman of the hour. Charlie's Angel to you said, <laughs> you just want me to know. You failed the test about knowing when to ignore stuff. You're going to get more tests. God keeps giving you chances to get it right. Good job, Shawana. And you'll lose even more on the in the prep. We start up on Sunday. Hey! Am I late? Am I the villain? No, you're oh, fine. Villain. You're totally fine. <laughs> it's, fi it's about time we did one of these together. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> I got Woman my fuzzy of God. I got my tea. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, I should have had something to drink. Girl. I think um it's I think it's gonna be it's been really refreshing because you're the third doc that I've had on and everyone that I've had on are um women of God. Mm. And they are, and I think it's really good for patients to see that because people really, um, it, even I did before I like fell in love so deeply with Jesus. I mean, I was always a Christian, a Christian, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. But, um, I fell in love two years ago and I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't used to seeing that either. Yeah, and and honestly, you were the first one Hello. that I saw represent the kingdom as a physician. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I didn't even know, um, I didn't know that Luke was a physician until you sent that uh, DM to all the doctors that you knew who were mm -hmm. soldiers for Christ, and you kind of like it was almost like you pulled a Samuel on us and anointed us all at once in the DM. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You did it was that 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 message. I'll never forget that message. Yeah. Because you know, I was like, wow, you know, because the interesting thing about it is I was really I had a lot of tor turmoil internally because you know, being a plastic surgeon of all the specialties in medicine, yeah. it's the one where it's kind of like, um, is that okay with God? And I was mm -hmm. battling with that when I first came to Christ for real, for real. I was, yeah. I was really battling with that. Like, am I sinning by even having this job? Hmm. You know, like what yeah. you do, everyone knows we need, <laughs> we need, but plastic surgery, yeah. you know, people, I've had people ask me, I remember this was before, this was when I was like early in my residency, like an intern. Mm -hmm. And I had met, um, I was like, um, I was with my brother. I was in Columbus, Ohio, and I was with my brother. We were somewhere, but we were looking at a, we were looking at a house for some reason. But one of the it was a realtor or something, and, and my brother was like, "Oh yeah, my sister's a doctor," and they were like, "Oh really? What's your specialty?" You know how people do. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Oh, I'm a plastic surgery resident." And she and the, and she was like, "Oh, so you went to medical school to do that?" Yeah. <laughs> oh, Come God. on now. Wow. Like literally, I was like. Mm. You know, so I'm, I'm people excited. say that you don't remember what they say, but you can definitely remember how they made how you, it made feel. you feel. It's unreal. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking like, and then when I was in residency, um, one of my attendings, 
when I was uh, in my last year mm -hmm. um, considering fellowship mm -hmm. and I wanted to do a fellowship in cosmetic surgery. Yeah. And he was like, you know, in plastic surgery, it's kind of like in vogue to do like a micro, well, then when I was in training to do a micro surgery fellowship to do like the big um, free flap breast reconstructions and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, mm -hmm. the reconstructions mm -hmm. for cancer. It's like, it's like a style of like a status symbol amongst plastic surgeons to, you know, do that. Yeah. So, and my program was really heavy on the free flaps and we had a fellowship for it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, oh, you're going to, are you planning to do fellowship? And I'm like, yeah, I want to do, you know, I'll, I want to do a cosmetic fellowship. He was like, oh, I was really hoping you would do something a little more altruistic with your life. Let's be safe. <laughs> <laughs> and what could I say? I'm a, I'm a resident. I had I you like gotta, you gotta eat it, <laughs> right? You know, in residency, you gotta eat it. You gotta eat it. Yeah. So I was just like, mm. Let, I don't even want to talk about that culture. Okay, let's not even go there with that culture. Honey. Uh huh. And still in the identity of physicians from that perspective, but that's a whole other topic. So, Baby, they steal it. I was just like, I was counting down to get out. Yeah and be free yeah but so tonight we're gonna but talk even Go with, but even with that like my mm, walk was a little bit different like i'm a family practice physician so you know our goal is preventative care preventative mm -hmm. care preventative care i need to keep you from getting diabetes i need to keep you from getting hypertension i need to but i felt like i was a pill pusher mm. so i had the opposite i'm like lord I'm so disenchanted with medicine because as a family practice physician, I'm supposed to be healing people and I'm not seeing nobody get healed. I'm yeah, because no one gets healed from pills. No, I'm literally managing your diabetes. I'm literally managing your hypertension. And for some patients, I used to do home visits too. So some patients I would see every month and I would actually go into their houses and I'm like, nope, that got to go back, got to go pulling stuff off their cabinets, pulling stuff out of their refrigerators. But everybody didn't have that opportunity for me to be that hands on with them. Right. So mm -hmm. I don't see them for six months, three months, nine months, 12 months. And your numbers still look the same. You ain't done nothing I didn't told you to do diet exercise diet exercise and take these pills diet exercise take these pills they just took the pills they skipped the diet exercise part baby and i'm like okay lord hey pumpkin <laughs> hi Mala Rose. how name? are you she said what's your name that's dr shanika my mom shanika yeah that's <laughs> yes little prophetess come on <laughs> oh wait she's the minstrel she's the minstrel prophet of the house yeah she's definitely a prophetess come on okay Myla Rose mommy doing her video why don't you tell Bennett to turn on Blippi go ahead so mommy can do her video <laughs> you want some more ice cream go tell Bennett hey Bennett Bennett get your sister give her some ice some more ice cream and keep her while mommy's doing the video close the door Just sorry y'all <laughs> look, I'm like, look, I'm like, give her more ice cream. Look, so then she's gonna be up all night. Girl, look, I got my little holiday treats for my dogs <laughs> next to me. Okay, I don't have a babysitter. Okay, you got built in babysitters. I don't have a babysitter. I'm like, get her. For these dogs. <laughs> they got their little comfy bed, everything. I'm like, don't, don't y'all play with me on this broadcast now. It's like having kids. It's like having kids. It is. <laughs> I tell people like having a having pets is like having toddlers that never grow up. Oh my god! If this one didn't quit whining like the thirty minutes before this broadcast, I was like, oh, we gonna have to, we gonna have That's to. That's what my mother does this. to me. And I call myself. <laughs> I propped her up with ice cream right before I texted her and said, "Are you ready?" Trying to keep her busy, and as soon as she right. was done, y'all saw the ice cream around her mouth. I'm like, Lord, give her more. <laughs> She's like, "What's next? What's next, mom? What are we doing?" That's so crazy, though, that you felt like a pill. I'm like, oh, well, yeah. she's family practice, so she gets it. But it's true. Mm -mm. And I, you know what? So I deal with, well, we both, both of our, I can tell you an area where our fields intertwine. Yeah. Psych. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. And so Big I'm time. like, and I, and I, and so a lot of, I'm not going to say a lot, but I would say maybe like a third of my new consults will have um, anxiety. Mm -hmm. as one of their I asked specifically about the anxiety and depression yeah um in my H&P yeah and um 
and they'll be on, you know, whatever stuff mm -hmm. for that, maybe more than one thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm not telling you to stop your stuff yeah. right now, but I am asking you to give God a chance Yeah. yeah. and start walking with Jesus fast until three. Come on. I tell him, I'm like, fast until three. I, Cause I, I'll ask him, I'm like, how long have you been taking that? You know, God only knows how long they've been taking it. And I'm like, D those medicines don't heal you of those That's things. Right. That's but right. deliverance will. Come on. Come listen. <laughs> let me tell you. The other day, dude, I was on a telemedicine call with a patient. Okay. She called in for anxiety, depression. The Lord had told me to get on that night. I never get on at night. I'm always hopping on in the morning, see a few patients. It's like sort of like a So you uh, can pick when you do it? Girl, it's like an Uber for doctors, girl. <laughs> do they need a plastic <laughs> surgeon? <laughs> And this lady has depression. She has anxiety. So I'm at the point now. I am such in such a totally different headspace. I'm at the point now when it's like, okay, like I'm itching in my seat. To I'm do, like, Holy to Spirit, it out. dude. I'm like, Holy Spirit, listen, I I can't do this right now. I'm on my job. Like I got, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I do I it all the time. I can't. No, 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 no. The other day I was like, let me cast out um, anxiety. Let me cast out deliverance. And when I did that, when she Oh my gosh, that devil is trying it. She done I don't see froze. nothing. Can you see me? Can y'all see me? Wait a minute, me? you froze. You froze. Can y'all see me? Okay, you back. You said when Can you, you did that. Can you see? Okay, good. <laughs> you see when I did that, when I cast. <sighs> that devil is trying it. Holy Spirit, I ask you to interfere with whatever it is the enemy is trying to do to stop this broadcast. Lord, bring her back in the name of Jesus. Let this message come across to the people who are on this video. I know it's an important word. That's why the devil's working so hard to stop it. Get back. She'll be back. She's going to come right back. She's coming back, y'all. You see how that devil do? Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. That we devil that Whew, come on. We we're in here praying, girl. We bind that devil right now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke Jesus. you. Every spirit that is trying to come against the broadcast, we rebuke you. We command mm -hmm. that um, Holy Spirit, send your angels to just open up the airways right now yes, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Woo! Yeah, Amen. I felt the fire on that. I felt the mm -hmm. fire on that. The minute I, I cast out depression and anxiety in her she had called for back pain she was like i need a steroid i need something i'm in excruciating pain we cast out the the cast out depression and anxiety and we also talked about forgiveness so mm. in that space she started That's probably what it was holding on to listen she started forgiving people that had done her wrong she had some abuse in the past when she did that i told her i said okay now stand up she stood up she her had full range of motion in her back. Her back pain was completely gone. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. As we're talking, she's like, oh my God, are you a counselor too? No, ma'am. I just know the name of Jesus. <laughs> That's okay. It? That's all I know. And she's like, I feel, I feel heat on my back. I don't know what that is. The Can Holy we say Spirit. Holy Ghost fire? Fire. Okay. Holy Ghost fire. fire. More fire to your back, ma'am. Okay. And I'm like, I'm at a place right now. Like I can't play doctor no more. I'm like, ma'am, let me finish the, let me finish the interview. We are, so we are like Luke in. kind of doctors. <laughs> Girl, I'm like, let me put these notes in, but let me pray for you real quick. How do you do your notes? Because see, I'm, I leave out that part in my. Oh, I left, I left all that out. Yeah. I put all the other stuff in there and I don't have nothing. <laughs> I don't that think they really want that part in the notes. <laughs> Cast it out of spirit. <laughs> they ain't ready. <laughs> I remember the first time I cast out of spirit, it was by accident. Wow. I didn't even know I was doing it. Huh. I didn't realize, I was talking to the, and this lady, she just, she had hypertension. It was, just hypertension. Yeah. It wasn't crazy out of control or anything like that. She needed to lose a little bit of weight, not a lot. Mm -hmm. 
But for whatever reason, whenever I go into the room, you know, I the Holy Spirit takes over every time, like mm -hmm. er, like every time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for whatever. And so like sometimes I'll end up talking about something that I don't and I am like, why am I saying this? But I know it's not me. So I just keep talking. Yeah. So for this lady, I kept kind of getting on her about her um, blood pressure. I mean, I got high blood pressure. I take meds, right? But I oh, was kind of on her. I know, I know, I know. Okay. That's why I'm doing my prep. That's why I'm doing my prep, honey. I gotta get it all. I gotta get it together. <laughs> so I was just on her. Like I, I just I'm like, and I was thinking like, she gonna think I'm crazy. Like, why am I kind of like just on her? And so yeah. and I, then I just it just came out of my mouth. So I said something to the effect of it um it may be a spirit of infirmity. Mm. Like I just said it. Mm. And then when I did that, she started yawning and coughing mm. her mm. eyes started tearing wow and then i looked at her and i said it is a spirit of infirmity mm. and right now it's trying to make me think you're bored so i stopped talking mm. and it's trying to you know if she was tearing up and everything and she was like say hi Come here, Mom. Hey. and she was like i'm so hot i'm so hot wow go ahead my mom she wants that you want to watch backyard again you want to draw Why a picture she you want to make a picture so yeah. Okay. Benny, give her some I, I'm some trying. paper and some some oh. markers or crayons or something, honey. Let her sit All right. Oh, that's okay. what she wants. Go sit her down at the table and let her draw. Mila Rose is a good artist. And so when I said that, she started like she started getting hot. Her yeah. eyes were tearing. She was yawning and coughing. She was like, "I'm not sleepy. I don't know why I'm yawning." She was like, "What the heck is going on?" Mm. So I stood up. I said, "Can I put my hands to your heart?" And so I laid my hands on her heart, and I prayed i didn't i wasn't even like spirit come out or anything like that but i prayed mm -hmm. over her and i asked the lord to heal her of it and then all of a sudden she like she just kind of like stopped and she was like oh my god oh my god what just happened she felt it leave wow and i was like what i was like what ha like i didn't i didn't know yeah what i was doing you hadn't even it was yeah home. yeah just it was following holy spirit wow her surgery was supposed to be like a few days from then it was her pre-op appointment and yeah. Her weight wasn't where it needed to be quite yet. And her EKG was slightly off. So we rescheduled it. Mm -hmm. um, but she she kind of ran out of there. She was like, then she called back and she was like, I was in the car for 30 minutes crying. Like, I can't believe what just happened. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there like, okay, so I'm casting out demons now, Lord. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm just. <laughs> and what's so interesting about that, Doc, is as I was praying about this yesterday i heard the lord say that he's gonna move you even more in deliver i'm glad you told me that you're doing deliverance now because he's it's moving not you. a whole lot because i still I, feel listen listen I'm not to what i'm saying listen what listen what i'm saying okay mm -hmm. holy spirit said <laughs> that you will be moving okay in deliverance <laughs> okay you won't even like you said, you won't even know that you're doing like a lot of my small groups, people don't even know that they're getting delivered as we're talking through stuff. You don't have, I mean, people think deliverance is such a scary thing, but understand that if you are a Christian, if you are a believer, deliverance is the children's bread, right? So mm -hmm. when Jesus was casting out devils, I, listen, it does not have to be a scary thing. It is not right. something that you're like, Everybody you know, about to be laid out, floor. crack, you know, it's not like that all of the time. So if you are in a, like, especially in a small group setting, in my small groups, I do deliverance all day. They don't even know they get delivered, okay? We I just got delivered talking. by the, the Lord did a sneak move on me. I ain't know. Come on. Don't even know it. I was like, don't come on. No but demons. I don't play. We, not, we, not about, we are not about to pet our demons. Okay? We That's are not right. about. That's we, right. We can't do it. We can't that keep is, petting oh our my demons. God. Are you in my head? I literally, <laughs> when I had, a, I had a, um, cause people, okay, I'm not anti therapy. I've been to many therapists. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what, but I was just kind of like, it's kind of like therapy can be the same way these pills are. Yeah. If, if the, per, if the, if the person has demons and the therapist got demons, if you go into marriage counseling and both of y'all got demons yeah. and nobody has discerning, dis, the gift of discerning the spirits and ain't nobody casting them out, y'all demons just in there playing on the couch. That we part. just playing with each other's demons, right? That's that's basically what was happening Yeah. when I was going. You yeah. know, until, so I, I, I believe that I had a few therapists um, come to my, you know, my office or whatever and 
and we would end up having that conversation. They're like, oh my goodness, I never thought about it like that. Mm -hmm. Because our therapists need to be able to cast out spirits. Come on. You can't even get down to therapy if you're playing with demons. Come on. Come on. Spirit led counselors. That's exactly yes. why. To be honest, I'm going to be just straight up honest. That's exactly why I won't go to therapy now. So yeah, I, I, used to to therapy. Suffer, I used to suffer I from depression. No, Benny. So you tell Benny. Benny. Hey, Benny, get off, of the, um, get off of the computer. Give her stuff to draw with. She didn't run too far, baby. Get off the computer and go draw pictures with her. And get her some markers. Close the door. That's right, Ariana, not a play okay, close the door, baby. Talk about she ran away. She been in here for five minutes. <laughs> Get your tail off that computer. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hear her giving but up yeah, the business. Girl, listen, I have suffered from depression. I've suffered from suicidal thoughts, suicidal attempts, multiple. Mm. Okay. Um, they said I had bipolar. All of these things. I am 12 years out, actually almost 13 years out from being delivered from depression, bipolar yep, disorder, yep. and suicide. Now, understand this. Didn't no preacher, nobody laid hands on me. I didn't have anything cast out of me. It was literally the renewing of my mind. Mm -hmm. It was me seeking Jesus. It was mm -hmm. me seeking his face. It mm -hmm. literally, had. I had to hit rock bottom. Like, I was in, Dr. Myla, I was in jail. You hear me? I was in J-A-I-L, okay? I Child. was in jail the year I was graduating from medical school. This is how what? the enemy is. He, listen to what I'm saying. I was in jail, had to hit rock bottom. And I'm like, okay, Lord, uh -uh. if you real, you're going to have to come through. You're going to have to show up and you're going to have to show out because either that or I'm jumping off this building, period, oh point Lord. blank. Right? So how, what happened? Bottom is where Jesus met me, girl relationships people taking you where you, you know ain't what? supposed to go this is exactly why i started walking with jesus i literally mm -hmm. was like i gotta bathe my soul in the holy spirit so i don't go to jail that's it that's it that's it uh, that's and the lord walking. and the lord will do like you called it a sneak attack he did that for me i was like oh wait a minute i'm i'm not taking medication oh wait my mind is regulated it's oh wait clear. my emotions are regulated oh i don't have this problem no more Come on, and year after year, I would have that same testimony. Mm -hmm. That's how mm -hmm. amazing God is. So, like, mm -hmm. I, I can't. It's it's so hard for me to play physician now. I can't separate it. <laughs> I can't separate. I cannot separate it. It's it's it's, it's ridiculous. It's impossible. He, just too, yeah. I, so I so what's interesting about you asking me to do this BMI talk? I'm like, girl, I ain't done a, a health talk. Well, it's still it still relates. <laughs> it it still relates. relates. It because the way I get people to lose weight, I get them to walk with you, commit to walking with Jesus 30 minutes a day. And that's yeah. walking, listening to the Bible, not gospel music. Yeah. Um, the Bible. Yeah. Right. And I used to tell them, listen to the Old Testament because it has all of those. It's a good way to get people started because it's all of these stories. It's like, it's like empire and the young and the restless and power all rolled up into one. Honey, you wrote through that book of Judges <laughs> and you'll be like, this is the Bible. Right, so I'm like, starting. Wow. Off, I'm like, Good go mom. to Judges, go to Samuel, go. It's it's off the chain. Yeah, Just start yeah. walking and listening, and the Lord will yeah. start speaking to you. And if you commit to thirty minutes, the people you end up walking longer than thirty minutes because thirty minutes yeah. go by so fast because the stories are so good, right? Yeah, so yeah, then I right. and I tell them to fast until three. I'm like, it's not intermittent fasting; it's a spiritual fast. We're we're doing this to get closer to Jesus. You're not walking for exercise or to lose weight. Mm -hmm. You're walking yeah. to get closer to God. He's going to reward you with the weight loss. Yeah. Right. And right. so then people will start doing it and it'll, it literally will start renewing their mind and they'll start dropping weight. Then yeah. they'll realize with the fasting, you realize the unhealthy relationship you have with food because that's what made me start losing weight. I got up to 204 pounds. Wow. Yeah. I wasn't 200 pounds when I was nine months pregnant with any child. Yeah. 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 And that's stress to do it. No, it's definitely related. Actually, the Lord started to show me that last year. So that's how this book here, right here, mm -hmm. the power to heal your heart book yeah. is specifically for healing your soul. Um, because what happens is, so let's, let's break that down. Just let's just break that down. Your soul is your mind your will and your emotions mm -hmm. right so people talk so much about your spirituality go to church read the bible do all of these things and then people talk so much about the body 
right? Exercise, work out, eat right, all of these things. But what we tend to leave out is the soul part. Mm -hmm. Nobody talks about healing your soul. Mm -hmm. Nobody talks about healing your soul from the trauma from when you were molested back in, right. you know, when you were five years old. Nobody talks about the trauma that happens with the divorce that you may be going through. Nobody talks about the right. things that are happening to your soul just from the things that you put into your eye gate and you put into your ear gate. Like your soul is the most one of the most important aspects of you. Why? Because the same because the enemy has the ability to connect to you through mm -hmm. your soul. Oh. Yes. So that's yes. why we have so many Christians that are messed up. So many Christians that say they love the Lord, but they're not walking with the Lord. They're not in intimate relationship with the yes. Lord. Because Jesus is what? Jesus is the lover of your soul. Yes. And if you are not allowing Jesus to love that part of you, come on, then then what are we exactly. doing? Exactly. What are we doing? Right? Paul told us to walk out our salvation. Mm. Which so is, you I walk say, and work so well. It literally where it's different. Like I you get the when I walk and listen to the Bible, yeah. I get it is different. Sometimes yeah. I will listen and read it at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. But what happens after you hear the word, right? So the Bible tells us to be hearers of the word and to be doers of the word. There's yeah. so much scripture in the Bible for us to be healthy in our bodies naturally. Yes. Yep. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So he has literally, I mean, if the Lord created us, right? Say you have, um, say you have a coffee machine and your coffee machine breaks down. Who do you go to when your coffee machine breaks down? You go to the manufacturer. Correct. You don't call your friend to try right. to figure out the intricacies of what's going on right. with your, you go to the, you go to the maker. Right. God created us. Don't you know that he understands every integral part of our bodies? He know, he understands us better than we do. He knows our hearts better than we know. Girl. People don't get that. Mm -mm. We want to go to Google. And I, Why do you I think people don't want to read the Bible? <laughs> I Why, get frustrated. Why do you think people don't want to read the Bible? Because that's what I realized. People will do everything but read the Bible. But I read my the Bible. devotional. I'm like, but did you read the Bible? Because there's no understanding. And the reason why there's no understanding is they don't walk through the Bible with Holy Spirit. You're trying to read the Bible with your own eyes, with your own understanding. The Bible tells us, lean not to your own understanding. Correct. You Correct. have to read the word with the word. You have to read the word with Jesus. You have to read the word with Holy Spirit. Why? Because Holy Spirit leads you into all truth. Mm hmm Holy Spirit is the teacher. Holy Spirit is the revealer. There's so many of us as Christians that don't activate. Come on, Holy Spirit, activate. activate. Holy Spirit. Holy no, activate. Nobody want to activate the Holy Spirit on the inside of them. Like you are literally living with truth. Well, some people don't have no Holy Spirit inside of them. They've been sending so much, too many demons in there. Holy Spirit was like, I'll come back when they leave. Holy Spirit is still there. If they are saved... <laughs> Holy Spirit was like, it's too many of them demons in there. I'll be back when they leave. But or when it you does. Leave, get them out of here. What happens is that it hardens their heart. So if you look at Ephesians 4, I believe it's 418 around there. Ephesians 4 says a hardened heart darkens your understanding. So mm -hmm. the heart in the Bible is the soul. The soul is your mind, will, and your emotions. So if you are feeding your soul garbage you are hardening your heart to mm -hmm. the understanding and the revelation of the word you can't get it you won't get, you can't it. get it right i find like every time i am binge watching on netflix if i, I am I, listen but this this is why i why I, why i have to monitor what I do when I find myself in that space, I find myself getting sad more easily. Yes. I find myself eating things that I am not supposed to eat. Yes. I find myself gaining weight. Mm -hmm. I find myself becoming more irritable. Yes. I find myself snapping off on people when, you know what I'm saying? They just yes. say something that's benign. So mm -hmm. what you feed your soul, uh, what comes out of the heart are the issues of life. You speak from what's in your heart that's so right you have to monitor the bible tells us to guard your soul mm -hmm. <laughs> that's me i'm the author girl 
from those things you and have you have to, to pay to... You, the way you feed your soul yeah. is through the gates that's right the way you feed your soul is through the gates and also what you um lock up with yeah that's sex Ooh, come on <laughs> them soul ties ain't no punk mm. yeah and so people don't realize like they think like when i when i have people commit to fasting for 40 days mm -hmm. not like i'll just you know it's just don't eat until three when people are just kind of getting started I'm like don't eat until three but also during that time don't watch television mm -hmm. and don't listen to secular music and i'm like it's just 40 days yeah. it's just 40 days like during that time the only thing you want to let into your temple are things that you wouldn't be um embarrassed to do at church or watch mm -hmm. at church or mm -hmm. hear at church mm -hmm. essentially mm -hmm. is how you can kind of gauge what you should be shutting off and stuff yeah when i did that when i tried to come back to those things i was like yeah why was i it, didn't, it, it was I, I couldn't watch the stuff no more yeah. yeah i couldn't do it like i literally was like wow like and i was planning to, i was planning i'm like this is for 40 like but that's not what happened yeah like it literally because when i was feeding myself the word and then yeah. and cutting myself off from that stuff when i came back to it it literally was like i, I felt like yeah you yeah. know like I, I felt like i was contaminating myself yeah like I, you get offended like I, are you all yeah. watching do you all see this like right, i was this? like i can't believe i i couldn't believe that i was feeding and then you wonder why you your heart is hard why you um can't trust god because most yeah. christians don't trust god yeah I was just talking yeah. about this the other day. I'm like, uh, Dr. Amaka, I'm like, most Christians don't trust God. They think they do. You ask them, I ask people that, I ask people that all the time. I'm like, do you trust God? Oh yeah, yeah I trust God. And I'm like, no, you don't. No, you don't. The, pro the reason why people don't trust God is because they don't see God operate in the, they don't see the power of God operate in their life. Right. And that's well, the reason they don't see it is because they don't, first of all, they have no patience. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have no patience and the power we as Christians, I tell people this all the time. When you're surrendered to the devil, which most people are not on purpose, they're not saying I'm surrendering to the devil. But if you're not surrendered to the Holy Spirit, you're surrendered to the devil by default. When you're surrendered to the devil, it, that's on. how it goes. Like that's what Jesus said. He like wow. you either with me. If you're not with Come me, on. you're working against me. Period. Come on. The end. Right? You hate what so I hate. If, if you're not surrendered, um, I mean, as when you're to, to get power through Satan's devices, because his stuff is powerful too. It's just not more powerful than the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That, these people who practice that stuff on purpose, they get power by defiling themselves. Yeah, yeah. In fact, many of the things they do to, to, to get power, to invite demon spirits into them so that they have more power, they seal it with sex. They seal it yeah. with things that defile, or blood. They, just, they yep. defile themselves. That's yep. how they get more powerful. As Christians, as followers of Jesus, our power purity. lies in our purity. Purity, that's it. Purity. So the the and most of us don't have purity. Yeah. We're yeah. out here. Nobody we wants to walk in righteousness. Nobody no. wants to walk. That's your breastplate. Holy. Yeah. Yeah. So and that, look, look, look what the pre, look what the breastplate does. The breastplate of guard righteousness your guards your heart. Come on. Come on. That's and they right walk there. around with mango breastplates. I'm like, you out on the battlefield and your breastplate is broke up and hanging off. And the heart is the most, just like physically, the heart is the most vital organ. If you get shot in your heart, guess what? You it's ain't a wrap. It. It's done, right? So same thing. The enemy knows that. He's coming straight for your soul. The enemy of your soul. He's coming mm -hmm. after your eye gates. He's coming after what you hear. He's coming after your mind. I heard in the spirit that in the next few years, the enemy is coming mostly after the mind. That we have to protect our minds. Y'all y'all get all excited about this virtual reality if you want to. I ain't doing that. Listen, the enemy is coming for your like, mind. Uh -uh. People will not. This is what I heard in the spirit. People will not be able to differentiate between virtual reality and what's in front of them. And their minds are going to snap. The enemy is coming 
for your mind. It is our mind, our will, and our emotions. When your mind, listen, I'll tell you about a time when my mind felt like it was shattered. I, I can tell y'all my personal stuff because I've been delivered from it. There was a time when I was suffering from depression uh, and bipolar disorder where I felt as if literally, Dr. Mata, like my mind was broken. I felt mm. it shatter. There was, I was crying one second, I was laughing the next. I was crying one second and I was laughing the next. I had no concept of what was happen happening around me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The enemy will have you so weighed down that your mind will snap. That's what he wants. He wants for you to go crazy. Mm -hmm. He wants for you to lose it. He wants for your mind to not be, to not be able to um, function correctly because if you if your mind function correctly, that means you have the ability to make decisions, right? God mm -hmm. gave us a free will. Yes. Right? So when you are able to make the decision, and it is a decision a to decision. follow Christ, it's then you begin to renew your what? Your mind, mind. by the washing of the word. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's, that's how he does it. That's Come why on. in Romans 12, 1, Come that's, on. what, that's on my profile. He's the, he, he said, I, he wants us to give our bodies to him as a holy and living sacrifice. sacrifice. The kind he will find acceptable is the way to truly worship yeah. him. Yeah. Then it says he doesn't want us to be conformed to the ways of this world, but he wants to transform our minds by changing the way we think. The only way he can do that is if we give ourselves to him first, That's because right. if, we, if we give ourselves to him as a holy and living sacrifice, then we're going to be, that means when I, the way I think about that, I'm like, okay, it's holy things you're not going to do, you're not going to curse through, through a holy temple. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to watch pornography yeah, in yeah, a yeah. church. Yeah. You're yeah. not going to, you see what I'm saying? You're not going to yeah. listen to uh city girls talking about yeah. bad, A, B, yeah. give a F by the. Who is that? I don't even know who that is. You don't know who that is. No, I don't. <laughs> okay, I'm like, I'm so everybody out of this world. So all these folks be all talking about these city girls. Well, they probably don't do it no more, but they was a couple summers ago. But it was ridiculous. Like these young little cute girls, but they were so just, and right. people running around saying this horrible song or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, you wouldn't be listening to that stuff if you were treating your temple as if it were holy. And then yeah. once you do that, you can you can receive the word. It, yeah. you, it ain't really too much more to read if you ain't yeah. if you're not yeah. trying to yeah, do yeah. all that simple stuff. But this is how he transforms our mind. This is how he transforms our mind. You got to read the word. You got it's, yeah. it cleanses you. It filters it all that stuff. All of it. And people struggle to um, my struggle with church itself is that we have too many Christians that don't operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm hmm. Um, so therefore it makes it difficult for people to believe because they like, you look just like the rest of the world. Or sometimes that we look weaker. Yeah. That part. You yeah, look like the rest of the world no power, and you, no power, no, money, no authority, nothing. You broke, you we victim, we're spinning, victims. You're doing all, you're doing everything that everybody else is doing. How does that differentiate you? as a Christian, how does that set you apart? The Bible says that we are set apart. We are a royal priesthood, right? So we should be in a position where we just look different, mm -hmm. that there's a glow about us, that mm -hmm. people are looking at us like, what is it? What God is she serving, right? Like I need, I need me personally, I need to see miracles, signs and wonders following me all day long because yes. I believe in Christ, and if I am out on these streets, if I am at the gas station, if I am if I am uh, in the grocery store, and I see somebody limping, I'm gonna go pray for them. I don't need mm -hmm. an audience. I don't need a, a a church choir behind me singing. I don't need. A, why aren't we seeing? Just close the door. The power of the Holy okay, Spirit in her. our everyday lives. Sorry, That's okay. I was at my son's football game. Yeah. Um. This was like maybe. It was like in. September or October and one of the kids got knocked like he got tackled in a way like he went when he went down he he was like <gasps> like he and he was he was he couldn't get up he was looking like he was he looked like he was out okay and yeah, he looked like yeah. he couldn't barely breathe right and so everybody paused the other little boys and took took a knee on the field and I looked at him I was standing there was another mom standing next to me and he wasn't getting up and so then I just went into prayer. Like I, it was a super quick prayer. And I just said, 
Holy Spirit, I need you to come and wrap your arms around this child and help him pop up as if nothing ever happened. Come on. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. As soon as amen fell out of my mouth, the little boy opened his eyes and he popped up to his feet. Come he on. literally popped up. Come on. The lady looked at me who was standing next to me and she was like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> because I did the prayer out loud and she heard it. And when I said, have him pop up as if nothing happened, in Jesus' name, amen. And he literally opened his eyes and popped to his feet. Jesus. And she was like, oh my God. Like she literally. <laughs> Come on. And I was like, I Witness. said, that Holy Spirit ain't no joke. But I was thinking, I was thinking what she was saying because this yeah. is still when the Lord was showing me he was like, I'm, he's, he's showing me, um, the power that I have yeah. in him because I still don't really understand it or really yeah. even believe it, yeah. you know? So, yeah. cause even the yeah. prayer is not how I normally would have prayed. Yeah. And usually when people are around, especially people who don't know me, I'll pray under my breath or mm -hmm. in my head. And yeah. I was very, and, and the Holy Spirit made me say it out loud. It was quick. And the boy literally popped to his feet come on he that's popped up so about. strong that they actually <laughs> let him in for the next play they didn't even take him to the bench that's how strong he popped up she was like wow. oh, shoot <laughs> she looked at I me like I was, I was like do you know jesus do i'm like listen that, whole, that I, I said that holy spirit ain't no joke <laughs> that's what i said like, but i was thinking like can oh, i introduce God. you to a man <laughs> i'm like what are you doing lord I love it. And that's what that's what we should be seeing. That's what we should we should be witnessing that like every day. Like that should be a part of our story. That I think my brain gets in the way. No, it you know what? It's a spiritual muscle, right? Yeah. It's a spiritual muscle. You have to build it. And in order to build a spiritual muscle, you gotta practice. And mm -hmm. people some people get offended when I say stuff like practice, but the Bible mm -hmm. told us to stir up the gifts that's on the inside of us. That means you and and there's an actual scripture that says practice. I don't know yeah. where it is right now. Don't y'all go look it no, up. No, I've seen that one too. I know. <laughs> but it's say the practice. He puts us, he makes us practice everything. Absolutely. You're like, Lord, just give me patience. He's like, all right, he gives you all kind of stuff to make yep, you have to put be something patient. in your way yep he told peter he said peter satan looks to sift you like wheat but i pray that your faith stands so it is the faith we are all given a measure of faith right it is our responsibility to build that faith as we trust god through the trials and tribulations in our life he says yeah. you will have trials and tribulations but i came i gave you peace i've come so that your faith would stand so that your faith would increase it is our responsibility so yeah. every time you take a step of faith to believe god every time you take a step to release what he said to you every time you take a step to do what he said to do to be obedient in that thing and you see the lord come through you see the lord show yes. himself to be who he yes. say he is that then your faith, your faith increases abraham abraham is known as the father of faith but right he taking his child right. up up there right he didn't always did it right no he did he not was having babies with the the hey because his now. wife had very little faith come on yeah he was trying to make stuff happen on his own. On his own. They start meddling in God's business. He was like, yeah, that's not the kid I was talking about. Exactly. Get it, get, <laughs> get it together. But the we way just, he I was got just talking it, about Ishmael with them the other day. It's like, but hey, how many how many Ishmaels are you going to birth? Listen, I got so many Ishmaels. I don't <laughs> have no new ones. My Ishmaels, look, I don't have no Ishmaels that's less than two years old. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we got to stop birthing. Ishmael. Because Ishmael, because here's the thing about Ishmael. I'm about to pull out the scripture. Hold up. Come on. Ishmael actually ended up, it made it so that they had even more trials as a result because Ishmael, yeah. hold on. Genesis. Yep. 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 Same thing with David. Can't wait to talk about him too. I know. Because that's why his, because of how he did with, uh, Bathsheba? With Bathsheba, it made it so that his family had His strife. whole family, strife, yep. issues, drama. And we okay. keep looking at the drama in our life like, am I the drama? Am I the villain? Am I the... Well, yeah, I need you to stop birthing Ishmael's. Get it together, son. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so here we go. So it said in um, Genesis 16, starting verse 11, and the angel also said, 
You are now pregnant and will give birth to a son. This is the angel talking to Hagar after she had ran off. Mm -hmm. You are to name him Ishmael, which means God hears. For the Lord has heard your cry of distress. This son of yours will be a wild man, as hmm. untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fist against everyone, and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. Phew. So this is what Ishmael did to his family. Like and this we is what we still Ishmael see did it today. Yes, we still see it today because he birthed many nations too. Uh huh. And so the Lord blessed bless that. He he said, "I'm a I'm still gonna bless it. You still yeah. gonna multiply. You still, but there's gonna be you gonna have a whole. And that was from them meddling mm -hmm. in God's business. Yeah, but no Abraham faith. was still called the father of faith, even though he messed up. See, that's what people think. They're like, oh, well, he I'm he learned up. from he learned. He learned. He got yeah. it because David it. learned." He, David was the man after God's own heart. I love David. You hear what I'm saying? He was, David he learned. Was, he David messed up many, 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 let me let me get drunk. He saw that it didn't work. He saw that yep. was his punishment, and he like okay. He kind of yep. stayed focused after that. Yep. He went and took that census later on, but that's pretty yep. much it. Like yeah. he really pulled it together after a uh, yeah that and situation. It was his posture. This is this is where people miss. It was the posture of after his heart. Mistake. Yep. Yep. He would always. He had a heart of repentance. There are so many yes. Christians now that are, that are in this grace theory like oh it's I, you know I, it's it's i'm under god's grace i don't have to repent i don't have the devil hebrew, is a liar okay? hebrew 10 26 start the, there listen and the first thing jesus said when he started his ministry repent <laughs> for the kingdom is near so when you have and to even understand that so this is why people don't 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 receive and don't um, understand the power of the Holy Spirit and enter into the kingdom is because they don't have repentant hearts. That is yeah. the working yep. out of the salvation of your soul. It, the it way, we, the way people, the same thing. The way people naturally think now with any situation is that it's the other person's fault. Ah, that part. And I mean, I don't care what the situation is. If God allowed you to go through the situation, there's something for you to learn in it. Even yeah. if the other person seemingly was 100% wrong. Yeah. Yeah. If you focus on what the other person did or what they going to do or when they going to start or whatever, yeah. you miss the opportunities for God to grow you and to show you the areas where you fell short. Yeah. Yeah. I tell people all the time, there's always a fruit of the spirit that the Lord is trying to develop in you. The That's Lord right. is always trying to make you more like Christ. Yes. That is always the ultimate goal is to have you look more like Christ. So your trial and your tribulation is trying to work something out in you like peace, joy, uh what are what are the fruit of the spirit? Um long uh, suffering, patience, uh, self-control, self-control, gentleness, all of those things he's trying to build character in you. This is why people this is why I don't understand people who just come into Christianity talking about I want to work in the power of the Holy Spirit. Well you can do that. Yeah absolutely but your character is not built. Mm -hmm. So if your character is not built, you operating in all this power. Right. You're going to tear something up. It's over. Let me it's tell over. you something. So this is what I just had revelation about last or earlier this week. The Lord took me back to Samuel um, and like studying King Saul and King David. Yeah. And King David is one of my favorite people. Like he's one of my favorites. Um, but I was like, you know, they had the exact same assignment. Hmm. They they had the same assignment. And they were anointed by the same person. Yeah. Um, except their their fates were totally different in that assignment. Yeah, that's good. Right. So the reason is for the what you mentioned earlier, it was the posture of their hearts. Right. Well, what happened with Saul, and this is why you don't want the thing right like you don't want like it's like i tell people i'm gonna get my son a car when he's 16 
he's 10, I'm not going to get it now. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. got to, he's got still more developing to do to be mature enough to be able to drive a car yeah. and make, you know, all the, yeah. so you can't get and it to him may now. not get it then. If he, if he ain't, he ain't ready. To be a 16. If he ain't ready, exactly. Yeah. So you got to prepare. I, he has to be prepared to be able to be safe in that and make it so that when he drives a car, it doesn't kill him. Yeah. With Saul, he was anointed and shortly thereafter, he actually took the appointment. He was actually mm -hmm. appointed to the position. Yeah. The Lord will let us know that something's coming. Like, or he'll let us know where he's taking us sometimes. And then it's a, it, it's a, it's a while before you actually the process. get there. Yeah. Right. But with Saul, he got there pretty quick. The Lord didn't take Saul through a process of growing him or developing him for the yeah. position. But the Lord also said that the he had already told the, the Israelites what was going to happen when they got a king because he was irritated that they wanted one in the yeah. first place. Yeah. So he Saul gave the kinda, people what they wanted. Yeah, he I gave people what they what wanted. He so he didn't prepare <laughs> Saul for it because he wanted Saul to... And the reason why Saul failed so miserably not wasn't because he didn't desire to do well, mm -hmm. but the condition of his heart yeah. hadn't been... He was insecure... And every mistake he made, the big mistakes that really made God be like, just never mind. They all were born from his insecurity and feeling like he wasn't really supposed to be in that position. Oh, now, good. David, David, because he said at the beginning when, when, when Samuel came to appoint him, he was like, I'm from the least tribe, uh, like the, Benja the, the tribe of Benjamin was the Benjamin. lowest tribe, mm -hmm. and his family was the lowest in that tribe. He was like, yep. how am I to, right? Yep. So then David, when he was anointed, it was like 13 or 14 years before he was appointed. And the Lord actually used Saul to develop David's heart. To develop heart. him. That's right. That's right. So that when he girl. was in the position, he, his heart was right. Yeah. Like his heart was right. Like he yeah. had all of those tests yeah. to prepare him. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. And David, David was the one who his heart posture was right from the beginning. It was pretty, but he, but he also was insecure. But when he was out in them fields, he right. was worshiping the Lord. He sure he was. He was worshiping the Lord in private. Yeah. He didn't need an audience. He didn't need, you know, and nobody behind him. he always worshiped him. the Lord. He always worshiped the Lord. Yep. Every time that he was delivered from one of them lions, tigers, and bears, okay, he worshiped. He always worshiped the Lord. It was you. It was you who did it. Mm-hmm. So his heart was already in the right posture from the beginning. But with Saul... And the Lord Saul, cultivated that. He cultivated that. Because with Saul, when he first was appointed, his got heart to was the right position, God the too. Lord put his heart... The Lord gave him a new heart. So he, mm -hmm. he let him start off right. But Saul didn't have a... Like the way David literally was just a worshiper by nature. Like he just... He, David stayed in the presence of the Lord and Saul yeah. would drift off. Yeah. So the difference between those two was mm -hmm. not so much that Saul didn't have an opportunity to grow he because he had trials and tribulations. He had instructions from the Lord. He yeah. had all of those things. It showed you what happens when you ignore the instructions of the Lord, mm -hmm. when you do your own thing, when you stay in a place of insecurity, when right. you stay in a place of jealousy and not believing that, you know, what's yours is yours, right. not understanding your identity and who in God Christ. has called you to be. Because at that point, it wasn't, he didn't know about Christ. He didn't have no yet. Christ, yeah. Right, but his identity in God, right? Right. Versus David, who after, look, the Bible says that you will have trials and tribulations, but that your faith stands. So as he, he's overcoming, the Bible says, um, you want, you, the one who overcomes is the one who enters the kingdom. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So it is, it is our trials and tribulations and how we respond to them. Yeah, because David followed his instructions to a T. Yep. David yep. will follow his instructions to a T. Yep. And Saul did not. Yeah. But Saul, usually when he fell out of order, he was his back was against the wall. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. not every time, because the time when he was supposed to kill, get rid of all the Amalekites, he just was trying to, like, be showy. So, I, you know, people, people get that. So with the Amalekites, the Lord told, he gave him a specific instruction. He gave him, a, he said, kill he everything. Told him, he said, kill everybody. He, he said, went and don't captured the no, king no and women, kept all no the good, children, don't, everything. don't take no animals, nothing. But what Saul did was he, he in his mind, he was like, but this I'm gonna is the way we used to, the to Lord. do it. Yeah. But this is how we used to do it. The same thing with the pandemic. 
The Lord is like, listen, look, I'm doing something new. I need mm -hmm. for you all to catch on. I need for you all to, to get with it. I need you to hear, hear me clearly and follow my instructions after this pandemic and during this letter. pandemic. And so many people are falling off and being mm -hmm. fearful and doing their own Correct. thing. And that's why the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. That's so right. So Saul messed up because he wasn't obedient. He's like, I'm, I'm still, Lord, I, all of these he said, I kept I the good stuff so I can sacrifice it. I want to sacrifice it to you. Yeah. And the Lord's like, that's not what I asked you to do. You can't do the same it. thing in this season from last season. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a new thing. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a new thing. Mm -hmm. So what is the new thing that the Lord is doing in your life? What is the Lord trying to tell you? What is the Lord is speaking over you? What has he told you to do that you have not done that, that you, you have need not to do because you don't want to be no song and have give up your assignment? Listen here. To somebody else. I do the, what he say. Come now. on. Radically. I do not want to be Saul. Obedient. I don't want Saul's faith. And Saul's faith. And that's the other reason why you got to get before the Lord and allow him to develop you, show you the condition of your heart, show yeah. you your areas of weakness, because it's your areas of weakness yeah. that you end up inadvertently. Saul didn't purposely right. disobey. That's the thing. It wasn't on purpose. You could tell he was, he wasn't trying, he wasn't evil. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he wasn't Jezebel. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he just, it was, it, his downfall was because of the areas in his soul mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that were not, that were wounded and not healed. And mm -hmm. when he got backed into a corner, those, that's where, he, that, it would shake his faith like that time when he was supposed to wait for Samuel to do the sacrifice. Yeah. And when it took Samuel too long, he got scared. And hurried up and did it because he thought that he, that's you know that was that's back to the insecurity thing. So yeah. this is why I really with every with every experience that I um go through, yeah, I immediately get before the Lord. I I the first thing I do is thank Him for I will I don't care how bad the situation is, I start looking for where God was and and thanking Him for being there. Yeah, oh that's good. Like literally, I don't care. Did you? Did you catch one of the live friends when I was telling folks about when um SWAT busted up in my house a, a couple months ago? No, I missed that one. Child. These, the people who follow me all the time, they didn't heard this story a couple times, but I'm going to tell you. Please tell me and the folks that's <laughs> coming to hear this story because uh, I need the tea. What happened? <laughs> so, so it was like six weeks ago. And me and the kid, we're in an Airbnb right now. I'm looking for a house now. The Lord made me leave the house I was in and mm -hmm. made me stay in Airbnb for six months. But now he didn't release me to get a, get a house. But okay. But anyway, I digress. We're in this Airbnb. Been here for mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. And it's 4 a.m. on a Thursday morning. I got surgery that day, everything. So it's like about an hour before I got to wake up, maybe two hours before I got to get up. All of a sudden, I hear bang, 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 bang on the door. I'm like, <laughs> right, <laughs> 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 so I get up and I and I and I go to the to the um hallway right by the foyer and I peek to around the corner to see because I didn't want them to see me see them. Right. And right. I see a dude on the porch. He was looking away when I looked and I'm like, oh okay. god. Like what? So That's I turn what? around and run in my room and I'm like, I gotta get my wig and my gun. <laughs> <laughs> Child, I was up here looking like Seely, child. In that order, okay? Wig, gun, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I was like, it's about to go down. I'm thinking like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, oh my God, right? So I come in my room and I like go for the gun and the Holy Spirit said, no gun. Wow. And I'm like, but you won't tell me to get the gun. I'm thinking, that's why the Lord had me get the gun. He like, this ain't why I had to get the gun. No gun. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I put my wig on. And I called um, somebody who I knew would answer in the middle of the night if I called because yeah. I wanted somebody to just be on the phone to witness whatever was about to happen. Did you know it was the cops? I didn't you... know it was the cops at first. I, I just saw one dude. And the all police were like, you know it's SWAT out there. That's what it was. I know now. <laughs> but when I first saw it, I didn't know that. All I saw was one dude's head through the top of the glass of the door. Yeah, yeah. So I was about to cackle. Okay, so I can't. So then they start beating on the door again. So I come around to the front door and I'm like, "What is?" It? And they were like, "Open the door, ma'am." And I was like, 
I was like, you got the wrong house. I said, this an Airbnb. <laughs> like, I'm like, don't nobody know I'm here. I don't have no utilities in my name. Like, ain't my name ain't on nothing. It's an Airbnb. Right. <laughs> he was like, we have a warrant for this address. And I said, how do you arrest that house? <laughs> the kids a lord the kids gonna get up so the dude drives on the front lawn with the car and yells out the loudspeaker open the door man or we're gonna tear the door down I'm i started crying i'm like Gigi, like yeah. oh my lord I'm like yeah. ah. so i'm like i gotta open the door because they about to drive through the front of the house oh if i don't so i went ahead and opened the door all of these men <laughs> file in they go to the back door and open it, and a bunch of men falling that way. It's like 30 SWAT in my house. Oh, my gosh. So I'm crying, and they're like, I'm sure. Take to each room, ma'am. So I led them to each room, and I just opened the door. I opened the door, and they just looked, and then went to the next room. They're like, it's a kid. It's, it's a kid. Like, they didn't go in any room. They didn't look under the bed. They didn't look in the closet. They didn't open no drawer. They didn't do nothing. They literally, I think, before they got in, they realized that this I wasn't who they was looking for, but they had to do it. So when, so... When they when we we met at the foyer again, and the man had me verify the address, and the, what freaked me out was when he showed me the address. I was like, "That's not this address." Like, I'm like, you just came to the wrong. They got the wrong address. So he was like, "Wait, wait, wait, wait," because I was like, "I was like, that's not the address." Because I'm that, somebody said it. Somebody said that's how Brianna got shot. Lit, yes. So so he was like, "Wait, wait, wait." So he flips because it was pages and it was the same name on each page with a whole bunch of different addresses with their name. So whoever they were looking for then ran some, then did something and had multiple addresses. And I guess this was the night that they was going to the addresses, child. So wow. it was only like the third page in was the address to this place. Wow. So I was like, that's it or whatever. And so they all filed out and left. It was like when they left, it was like they were never here. They didn't touch or mess up anything. I didn't go up there with a gun, so I didn't get sprayed. I'd have been dead. Yeah. If I yeah. came around that corner with that gun, they would have yep. shot my wig off, child. My kids yep. would have found me bloody in the floor. Jesus. You know what I'm saying? And so they left, and I called the owner of the house, let them know what happened. And then as soon as I, like, I got back in my bed, and I and I, and I I literally went straight into prayer and started thank I thanked the Lord for telling me not mm -hmm. to get the gun. I thanked the yeah. Lord for having those men come in and out quickly. I thank yeah. the Lord for not tearing up the house, having them tear up the house. I thank the Lord for my kids sleeping through it. I yeah. just started, thank, I just started, and I was like, the leader of the men, once he got in, he was very, he was very tenderhearted. Like, he mm -hmm. was, he understood that, like, uh, some of them dudes was rah rah. They looked like they probably had some demons. But the one who was leading them was gentle. Yeah, yeah. And so I thank the Holy Spirit for speaking to him. Yeah. To, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I found God in it. And I was like, okay. So yeah. then everybody close to me was like, you need to get, you need to move. My, and I was like, I'm not moving until the Lord tells me to move. Because the only reason I'm here is because yeah. he told me to. Yeah. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't abort the plan Ooh, because something that happened part. that I don't agree with or I don't that, understand. Right? That and part, like, you need right it. I'm like, there. No, if you need to find somewhere more stable for you and the kids. I was like, no offense, but I don't make decisions based on the kids, actually. Come I only on. make decisions based on what the Lord told me to do. Actually, I don't make decisions. The only decision that I have made Come at this on. point and continue to make is to follow Jesus and do what the Lord tell me to do. That's, That's it. it. So That's it. a couple weeks later, the Lord released me to start looking for our, our own place. Yeah. Yeah. But he was testing me. That's because he, I was because just where to say, right there. Me, yeah, where yep. he's taking me, he needs to know that in chaos and everything, I hear his voice and I obey it. Mm. If when it gets loud and crazy around me, yeah. I revert back to my own plan like Saul. Am I going to be Saul or am I going to be David? That's because it. David had plenty yeah. of hard situations. And the yeah. first thing David would do, I remember in um in Samuel, in 1 Samuel, one time Saul had got a bunch of troops to go and hunt David down to kill him. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the word got back to David that Saul was looking for him and was planning to kill him. And David got in prayer and went to the Lord and was like, is he going is he going to kill me? And the Lord was like, yes. So mm -hmm. what David do? Then he went to the stronghold and mm -hmm. waited. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Lord was like, he if you sit here, he will kill you. Yeah. He will follow the Lord. The Lord would tell him when to go and retreat. Yeah. The Lord would tell him when to go and battle. Yeah. And he would tell him exactly what to do in yep. the battle so that he would get the victory. Yep. And so just because something happens, that doesn't give me permission to do mm -hmm. my own thing. And I think the Lord just wanted to see in that scenario, because I was like, I know the Lord was in it because they were supposed to ransack this house. Hmm. How are you going to not even look in the closet? Yeah. Under the bed? Yeah. 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 They literally opened the door. I will open the door to the room and they did this. <laughs> How are you going to beat my door down to do that? You're supposed to tear this house you up and beat the door down. You need to, I, look, I'm scared now. Somebody in this house, you need to check under everything. That's why I'm like, look, listen. <laughs> And everybody was like, you need to sue them. I'm like, I'm not suing them. That ain't the assignment either, honey. That's yeah. just distraction. Yeah. People will find distractions, honey. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I'm not about to sue them. For are what? you going to listen to your buddies or are you going to listen to the Holy Spirit? Child, I ain't listen to none of them. I was like, no. And you know what? Me and the baby slept like babies that night, the Come next on. night. Come I on. wasn't scared because I realized when I sat down and, and, and listed all of the areas where the Lord showed me he was there, yeah. Why am I going to be afraid now? Come on. That's what gave me peace. I was like, and I Jeez. went to work. Kids went to, and guess what? Check this out. This is the most beautiful part of the story. When I finished praying, when I lifted my head up and eyes open, my oldest was standing at my door. He was like, mommy, I saw the police. And I said, you were awake? He was like, yeah. But when they came in my room, I just kept my eyes closed. Mm. I said, were you scared? He was like, no, I wasn't scared. So mm. then, the, so I'm thinking that Bradley stayed asleep. When Riley finally got up for school to get ready for school, I was in the kitchen, like, taking my supplements and stuff. And he came and he said, Mommy, I heard the police is out there. Hmm. And I was like, you did? Were you afraid? He was like, no. I just, he said, God told me to keep my eyes closed. <laughs> Where's the, y'all put the runny emojis in the comments. Yes. Jesus. He said, God told me to keep my eyes closed. They both got the same memo. They followed the instruction. Come on. When we went to bed, they weren't scared. No, none of us were scared. Everybody else was. That's because everybody else is living in fear, and they're not. Come I on. always, I don't care what it is. I'm like, okay, God, what do you want me to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, lo I love this I'm going to be like David. I love After Bathsheba. Come on. <laughs> Post Bathsheba David. <laughs> Post baby mama. <laughs> Post baby mama David. <laughs> like that's my goal. Cause I'm like, I know that I know, I know, I know that in order to have David never lost a battle. Yeah. He never lost a battle because okay. he never went into one without the Lord. He consulted the Lord constantly. Yeah, yeah. So I don't try to make decisions by myself. I'm not capable. When yeah. I was making decisions for myself, I tore my life up. I tore up a lot of stuff. Yeah. I, that's why I tell the ladies that, you know, that the Lord, the Holy Spirit ministers to them through me. And they're like, well, what should I do? I'm like, I don't know. Let me tell you what you should do. You need to walk with Jesus that's it. so he can tell you what to do. That's it. That's <laughs> it. You got to know the voice of the Lord Fast, for yourself. Pray. And that's the other thing. With these kind of experiences, okay, so I know how to hear his voice in a normal situation. But he's teaching me to hear his voice in chaos. I got to find his voice all the time, not Come just on. quiet. That's just like Elijah. They, he said the his, he says, uh, his voice wasn't in the earthquake. It wasn't in the fire. It wasn't in the wind. It was the small, still voice. You have to know how to hear that voice for yourself. In yeah. The midst of and he trains you. He yep. teaches you that with practice. Yeah. So when these crazy things, because I'm like, these, this is not a normal situation. Swap busting up in your house. I don't <laughs> that live that is type of life. Beyond normal. <laughs> yeah. I don't live that type of life. So he's teaching me. I'm like, okay. He's. T I just. I take everything. Everything. Like. Like my life is a classroom. Yeah. That's good. And if I fail the test, I gotta take it again. And I don't want to take these tests. Ain't nobody again. taking that. A man test. Lord, I need to get it right the first time. I don't want to take it again. We did not <laughs> talk about the BMI at all. At all. Wait a minute. <laughs> You gonna have to change the title. I'm gonna change the title. I don't even know what to change it to, child. Girl, I, 
listen, hear the voice of the Lord for your heart. Get your heart healed, okay? Get your heart healed. Because literally, it manifests in your... Let's, let's bring it back. Let's... Full circle. Okay? <laughs> Come on, Holy Spirit. Full circle. Come on, Holy Spirit. When your soul is healed, there's actually a manifestation in your body that happens at the same time. Sorry, my little light. I may look dark to y'all. My light went out. Y'all look dark. Uh, but it is you begin to see a manifestation in your body when your soul is healed. Like I'm hearing so many testimonies, like just like that lady who had unforgiveness, right? I've had people on the phone with me that, that have had like fibromyalgia, having all types of aches and pains mm -hmm. in their bodies get healed when they begin to forgive people. Yeah. Migraines get healed when they begin to forgive people. Um, um, as you, I mean, just as you work on yourself, in my own yeah. body, I used to, um, when I was going through all of that depression stuff, they actually thought I had an autoimmune disease. I had a mallow rash on my face. Mm. I had chest pains and shortness of breath. I had rashes on my arms. I had fibromyalgia pains. I had all of these all things. Of it. But when the Lord started to heal me from that space, all of it went away. Everything went normally. And I heard you talking about the other night about the lady and the witchcraft and, and the abnormal yes. labs. Like there are some things that are spiritual and there are some things that are soul issues. We mm -hmm. need to start talking more about, about the soul the, issues. Yes. yes, you can cast out some demons. Yes, you can do all of those things. But if you don't heal your soul, guess what? They're coming back. They're coming right back. With and you're going to be worse friends. off. With you're going to be worse friends. off. Mm -hmm. You got to so, forget. Yeah, forgiveness is... Forgiveness, I tell women, forgiveness, gossip, and fornication. All of that. Are the ones that people be doing and forget that they're sinning. Yeah. That's like, good. Folks straight up gossiping with their friends. I used to do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I can't, I don't want no parts of it. Yeah, that's part of that's part of guarding your ear gates. Yes, I don't want no parts of it. I'm not yeah. supposed to do that. Yeah. Blood me. <laughs> Glut me. Even just increase stress. Like we want to talk about obesity. You want to talk about weight gain. Stress will do it. Cortisol level, lack Boom, of sleep. Shoots up every single time. Your body is not supposed to be in the fight or flight mode all day. All the time. Day. Cool. It's just not supposed to be. But you feed yourself them housewives or whoever. Them all selling of them. houses of whoever. And they right? all got anxiety and spirits and Anxi all of this business too. Listen, full of every single time. Mm -hmm. your heart palpating you don't even understand why you, why, why you got heart palpitations you don't even understand why you so nervous all the time you don't understand why you got depression it's because what you watching mm -hmm. what you putting in your eye gates mm -hmm. it shifts it literally shifts your body physically down to the molecular level level yes and it changes the it changes like we're at the point now where right seems crazy Mm -hmm. And wrong seems Normal. altruistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally, yeah. like people will literally. I, whenever I see people put up a post and say, um, "What should I binge watch on Netflix this weekend?" Mm. Right, and everybody will be giving them recommendations of something that they're gonna watch for the next forty-eight hours straight. Right, yep. but when I tell somebody that I walked eight hours with Jesus, they think I'm crazy. Wow. Now, why you can sit up and watch Netflix for eight hours straight, but I can't walk with Jesus for eight hours? <laughs> Come on. People be like, eight hours? I'm like, yeah, I, start, I will start. I don't do that all the time. That was when I first started. And I was, you know, the, I was getting my soul bathed in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but yeah. I did it. It was m many times that I would get up and start walking at 630 in the morning and walk until I broke fast at three. Wow. That's so good. But people will lay in the bed and watch HGTV uh, yep. uh, for that many hours. That's the truth. That's the truth. You have I know to nobody be... think they crazy. Nope. Nope. Any anytime you start talking about Jesus, anytime. Listen, I got family members that I'm like, dude, just let me lay hands on you, <laughs> and they like, what? Lay hands? On why? Why? Why you want to do that? Cause this joker down the street that didn't know me <laughs> let me lay hands on him. Right. His back is healed. Okay? Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. You know where I'm about to take you to. Come on. Come what on. What happened Jesus? when Jesus was trying to Jesus. perform miracles in Nazareth? Come on. D don't nothing good come up out of Nazareth. <laughs> yeah, but Jesus was from there. He couldn't. He couldn't do no miracles in his own hometown. Jesus couldn't. So I mean, ain't that ain't that Joseph's son? Ain't that? I mean, ain't that right? You like ain't that ain't that just Joseph's son? That's a carpenter. Like, can I just give you just a little bit of Jesus? 
That's all I want to do. <laughs> the ones who want it. But I, I used to be trying to convince my, you know, my family. But now I just, you know, I'm just Myla. And I, you know, I do what I do with, it's with hard. people who want to listen. It's hard because you want you want your family to get it. You want your family to 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 start operating and doing what you you want them to be healed, right? Mm -hmm. I had a I had a, a a family member who had an ear infection, and I was like, I mean, is it gonna hurt if I lay hands on? Right, her? what's it gonna hurt? What's it gonna hurt? And she's like, Oh no, I'm good. I'm I'm just gonna take this medicine. Go right ahead. Child, I've been laying right hands ahead. on all kinds of stuff. Come on. I lay hands on my patients. And listen, I, I lay hands on my now. patients. I lay hands on my patients. Let me tell you about this one patient. It was so funny. So there are a few things that people need. They need to hear the testimony of Jesus and they need hands laid on them, right? Yes. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That means that as I testify about Jesus, I am telling you that Jesus wants to do it again for you, right? right? That's, it's the spirit of prophecy, right? Right. So I was telling this patient, sometimes the Lord would give me words of knowledge about pain that somebody may have, and I'll fill it in that area. So that day, earlier that day, I think we were in the middle of our 31 day supernatural healing stuff. And I, I have this elbow pain. I have this shoulder pain. I'm like, well, I don't know what this is. So I, I speak it over the broadcast. And I'm like, I believe that this is a word of knowledge for someone, for somebody that has elbow pain, for somebody that has shoulder pain. Come to find out it was actually my team member who mm. had just went to the doctor. She was diagnosed with epicondylitis of her elbow. She was oh. diagnosed with bilateral frozen shoulders. So she had decreased range of motion in both shoulders. Usually, like if something is going wrong with us, they text us in our little group text and let us right. know something's going on. She didn't say a word, but she had come to the doctor. So she had her doctor slip with these diagnoses on there. She said, after I released that and I prayed over um, whoever it was, because I didn't know who it was at the time that had that inflammation, she said, it started, she had swelling in her elbow. And she said, all of a sudden, she had full range of motion oh, in her goodness. arms and her elbow pain was gone. She sends me a message that night and she's like, okay, Dr. Shanika, that was me. And she showed me her work she got on video with me and started moving her arms and moving her elbows, didn't have no pain, okay? So the next day I'm in uh, one of my wound cares and I'm seeing my patient and I'm doing, I'm working on her foot. She had an amputation, I'm working on her foot. And all of a sudden she's like, doctor, I, I don't know what it is, but I've just been having some elbow pain. She was like, I know you, you the wound care doctor, don't worry about it. I said, well, <laughs> well let me tell you this Let me tell you something, honey. <laughs> so I, I can lay hands. Her, Come on. I told her the testimony of the young lady, the team member, about her elbow pain being gone. And then I laid hands on her and she was like, doctor, I don't know what you did, but I don't feel the pain anymore. Holy Ghost power. Came back the next week. She was like, I still don't feel the pain. This thing had it's been gone. bothering me for weeks. It was gone. It was it's healed. Do you hear what I'm saying? Like yes. people don't understand that. Like I've seen Listen, more I got a story. I got a story too. healed. I got a story. Then I have too. medicine. Come on, come on. I Testimony of Jesus. Too. This come lady on. came in for a skin consult. Yes. While she's there, she's like, "Do you take off? Do you take off? Um, can you look? It was a it was a Caucasian lady. Can, do you take off Moser? Can you look at this mark? I've, this thing I've had on my back. I think it needs to come off." I look at it, it looked like an actinic keratosis. She had like two or three of them in a cluster on her back. Yeah. I'm like, well, we can't do that today because that ain't in the schedule. I got other stuff. Let's, re let's schedule you for me to, you know, cut that out and we'll yeah. send it. When she came back about three weeks later, ooh, three weeks. <laughs> it's about mm -hmm. three weeks later. And I'm, it, and I'm like, okay, let me see it. I was going to look at it just to mark it. And I couldn't find it. Mm. Well, we also prayed that day. So we pr I prayed over her for some other stuff and that. Like, well, I just prayed over her. My little rose. Mm -hmm. So I go looking for it, and I couldn't find it. So then she starts looking. She all in the mirror. She said, she's like, I don't see. I don't feel it, and I don't see it. I'm like, I don't see it either. And we both looked at each other like, <laughs> it's gone. Come on, Jesus. It Come was on, gone. Jesus. I love it. I was like, um... If it come back, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Girl, it's done. 
Because I'm still, you know, I'm still trying to, the Lord is trying to, and I, I know sometimes he'll tell me to lay hands on people and I don't do it. Yeah. Like, I'll be like, am I supposed to do that? Is that me saying it? You know, like, so he's still trying to help me. But you can always, you can always pray the prayer of faith. If anything else, if you don't have nothing else in your arsenal, if you ain't heard the Lord say lay hands, if you ain't, you know, you can pray the prayer of faith because that's what we as Christians are supposed yeah. to do. Right? To see him yes. heal. We need more, we need more of this dialogue. We need more physicians operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Like we like if if we could do a class to teach some doctors, baby. Man, that's a good idea. Baby. But I don't know if I'm ready to teach no doctors yet. Girl, you teach, you get so this is how faith works. You freely give what you have already been given. So that's you true. have more than what the average doctor has. Yeah. Because I know, and I'm so grateful for my team because when God started using me in this way, he immediately changed my team out. Yeah, oh, wow. And because when he first started using me like this, my, my team was just used to regular doctor's office. And mm -hmm. so they would be annoyed when I would be in the room too long. I'm always in my, I don't have no short appointments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and they would be annoyed when I'm running late. Because they're like, why don't you just see the, why, just do the consult? Like, why does she keep doing all of that, right? They were just irritated. Mm -hmm. And it was actually inflammatory because when if, if I was running late, let's say I got a virtual somebody and I'm still in the room with the last person and they yeah. call, if the if they're irritated that I'm late and then the patient call irritated, they kind of like on the patient side, you know, they, they didn't neutralize stuff. So then the Lord shifted my team and everybody in there. Yeah. Be believe in, in in the power of the Holy Spirit. They yeah. be fasting and praying. They walk yeah. with Jesus. Come on. They warn the patients when they book their first appointment. Like, listen, don't be in a rush. Yeah. She might be running late. When she get to you, she's gonna take her time. She's thorough. She she evaluates you, mind, body, spirit, not yeah. just your. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like they yeah. they get the patients ready. You know for what you know for what comes with the appointment. Yeah. So he literally shifted everything around so that mm -hmm. I could serve in this way. So good. And I couldn't even imagine like it, like these different TV shows will, will reach out to me, you know, trying to get talent or whatever. And I'm like, listen, yeah. I am a woman of God before anything. Yep. So and it won't. And it's too infused in my life for you to try to edit it out. It won't work. You'll be frustrated, and I'll be Come mad on. when I look at it. Because <laughs> Jesus is in everything. In everything. <laughs> He and everything, and I'm not gonna take it out. Come on, and you know that's it. You I shouldn't mean, have to. You shouldn't have to. I ain't going. You to. shouldn't it's have to. And why we don't have more shows that actually show people believing it? Like I, I got so mad at like that preacher. I don't even remember the preachers of the passage. Like y'all, it, it was it was drama. A, that was nice. as, you know what I'm saying. Like. What show people what it really looks like to walk with Christ? Show people that your life is an adventure every single day because of the things that you are seeing people get healed from. Like, don't nobody want all this drama, fussing and cussing, and you know, like, let's talk about what the Lord is doing. Let's let's be girl. Let me let me get girl, off. Girl, you know soapbox. I know. <laughs> let me get off my soapbox. It's too much. It's too much. But it's we're so. Much. But the sad thing is we're more comfortable in that. Yeah. The world is more comfortable in that. Like, literally, they think we're crazy. Uh -huh. And that those people are normal. Just like some of these things that some of these celebrities be saying and doing. And then I, the, the few times that I actually will, like, say something about something out there that some celebrity did that's demonic. And the folks will be going hard in the paint for them people in the comments and don't even don't even know them don't let it like lie. first of all they just did a whole satanic worshiping ritual yep. that in that your part. face and you said a man with it you just came into agreement with a satanic ritual there has to be a washing uh and renewing of the minds he about it to get to us be. girl you know he about to he about to do he about to bring a whole bunch of folks to him in the just get ready, child. He watches. I'm like, I'm like, Jesus, you, you come, you come, like coming. soon. <laughs> he I'm like, he about to, they about to be, listen. Because I don't want, I don't want no parts, and none of this chaos that's coming. I don't want no parts. I want no take me to there. Take me. <laughs> I I wanna, I'm, I'm, we're, I'm rolling with you, right, Jesus? That's I'm it. coming with you. <laughs> 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 Looking down, like, like that's a mess. You see this girl? <laughs> 
that is a, that is a hot mess down there. That's messed up. We I want to be a part often. of the, the cloud of witnesses by the end. Me too. <laughs> and I want a good job up there in heaven. Come on. <laughs> I want one of them good jobs. <laughs> we need to do this more often. I'm so Me glad we too. finally did this. We ain't talking nothing about no BMI, but it's Sorry, all right. But it's all Listen, connected. You know what we help people with tonight? What? We lifted weight off of them spiritually. Oof. So they be, they spiritual BMI went down. And for all them religious folks, come on, that, that are hoarders of the word, come on. At, at some point, you're going to have to regurgitate that. So we helping you regurgitate that so you can mm -hmm. lose that spiritual weight. Okay. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> we need to do this again. Absolutely. I'm this blessed me so much. You know how I love talking about Jesus. That me is too. Like my life. I know. It was so fun. Like, having, like, it's talking to somebody. Like, you under, we understand each other's daily plights. Yeah. As, as, um, because, um, I had did a video a few months ago. I did, yes, a, first right, I put yes. up a post that said, the tower of uh, tech and medicine and science is the tower of Babel. I just said that to somebody the other day. I, I put, literally, I, I said the times we are in right now with tech, I literally just said, I'm gonna have to send you the screenshot on the post, girl. I said, yes. we are in the tower of Babel. The tower of Babel. And I, I said, said and I, then, I did, then the Lord gave me a prophetic word about how he was going to, the same way he was like, look at these, look at them. And then he just kind of like scattered them all where they could yeah. communicate. Yeah. And he gave me a word. I'll send you the link to it. And it was um talking of and I was talking about how if 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 how everything is interconnected through tech right now, mm -hmm. and if somehow the plug was pulled on tech, it would literally mm -hmm. make us be like those people where we couldn't communicate. Wow. We're connected <laughs> together. We're held together. Everything is glued together by tech. That's it. If, if that stuff was lifted, we wouldn't even be able to get water to come out of our faucet. Come on. Come on, everybody that's connected electronically with your lights. <laughs> Everything is connected. Like, literally, like, when we had that shortage on gas a few months ago, it was because of some tech issues. Wow. It wasn't because there was no gas. It was because yeah. it wouldn't come out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And just like, just, I believe, I, I, I truly believe it's coming. Just like when, was it Facebook had that glitch? And everybody lost their mind. Everybody. Google didn't had it. Facebook, Instagram. All of them didn't have it. Because they're preparing for when they pull the plug. Yeah. They're going to, they're going to, yes, my mom. Be pop, don't do that. Yes, Myla Rose. Mom, can I tell she does? Don't tell me now. I'm about to get off. I'm sorry. What you want? You want some apple juice? Yeah. Okay, go on, baby. Like get her some apple juice. juice. Just go, please do it. Let's I'm almost on. done. <laughs> She won't, she won't go with it. Myla Rose. You want to sit with me, Myla Rose? You got to be quiet, okay? Okay. Okay. Y'all heard so her. Do that. She like, I didn't give you peace and quiet long enough. For an hour and a half. <laughs> Quit acting like a baby, Myla Rose. You did so girl. good. Thank you, you did Mama. so good, Myla Rose. She did. <laughs> yeah, the government is behind it all. I agree. like somebody said the government's behind it definitely. Yeah. And but the Lord is the Lord is in is in control. He know what he's doing, mm -hmm. and he's waiting on them to make they. It's a it's a particular movie waiting on, and the Lord gonna step in, and they gonna get hung on the gallows that they set up for us. <laughs> Just like Haman. Come on. Just like Haman. <laughs> such a time as this. That's why we are here, daughter. Okay? That's why they need to hear that, that we need to facilitate bringing mm -hmm. the kingdom here on earth so that mm -hmm. people can get it, people can understand. Eyes are open. Mm -hmm. Come on, for such a time as this. Yes. Yes. It's so real. And people, people are sleeping. They are knocked out sleep and talking about they woke. I saw this <laughs> post was like, People so woke, y'all, y'all so woke, y'all sleep, y'all need to take a nap. <laughs> Cause look, if you've been up for, if you've been up for 10 years, honey, you delirious, honey. So ah. y'all, y'all so woke, y'all delirious, you need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> and then during that nap, you need uh, uh, the Lord to surgically do some things to you like he did Adam. Okay. Spiritual surgery. That's the name of my, that's the name of the book I'm sleep. working on. You Soul say what? Surgery. I'm Soul working on the book. 
soul surgery. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. Because mm -hmm. that's you what, know what I mean. really feel like the Lord is pressing that because that's what my book is about. Mm -hmm. It's about mm -hmm. healing the soul. Your the soul. Lord wants people to understand it's not just your spiritual, it's not just your body, but it is your soul. Your soul. We are three parts. We are tripart. Just like the God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we are tripart yep. as in the body, soul, and the spirit. Come yep. on. And people are always talking about what they feel. I feel like, I feel like you now it's like that phrase people use it so much now. Yep. Like everybody's yep. talking about, I just feel like, I feel like, I feel like, I mean, I feel like, I feel like I'm like, what is the word? And that's the is? last thing we supposed to make decisions on is our feelings. Yep. So much. I keep seeing this post getting posted. Do what makes your soul feel right. Or do what makes your soul feel good. Okay. You keep doing that. Especially when your soul broke down, child. Baby, baby. I'm like, that is not what we're supposed to do. No, no. Your soul is supposed to feel good. Your soul is supposed to be loved on by Jesus, and he's supposed to heal all those traumas and do all of those once things. It's, once it's healed, that, that would work. But most you people... You can't feed your soul whatever you want, because, no. I mean, that's just like saying, if you obese, feed feed your body what makes you feel good. If you if, if ice cream problem. make you feel good, if if a burger make you feel good, if, you know what I'm saying, like fried food make you feel good, okay, well, go ahead, cardiovascular disease and hypertension right. and, 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 and diabetes. The cash and director is looking for people for my 600-pound life. All that stuff be sounding good, but it's wrong. Exactly. Y'all gotta stop sharing and post like that. Y'all gotta y'all gotta look behind what, what is actually being said. The enemy is very tricky. People He's think, tricky. oh, the enemy is attacking me. No, the enemy ain't attacking you. You are coming into agreement with what with, he suggests. Yep. Yep. We gotta stop coming into agreement with what he suggests. Yep. And start releasing what the word of the Lord says. That's right. <laughs> That's right, because when I went and put up that post uh, talking about that prayer, that prayer Kanye did on Thanksgiving, did you see that? Did you mm -mm. hear that thing? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I yeah, I can't even. I, it was I, my sister know. sent it to me in the middle of the night because he released it at like midnight. I don't follow him or, but my sister was like, "Oh my God, what do you think of this?" Um, I think that he was so transparent and da da da, da. and then like. An hour later, someone else sent it to me and said the same thing. What do you think? And when I heard it, first of all, the music in the background, I could tell that it was nothing holy about what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And then he said, this is my Thanksgiving prayer. But then he proceeded to go on to something that was not a prayer at all. Mm -hmm. But he just said prayer. You know, he said that. And then at the end, he said, amen. Yeah, yeah. And so then all these people said, amen. I'm like, y'all don't realize. But the, it was a production. So clearly it wasn't just some random prayer he came up with because it was a full on video oh, wow. complete with people in black hoods, little kids with pale faces. It looked like a ritual. It looked like a. Oh, it wow. was scary. It was a dark room and they were standing in triangles. It was really, and he was, and basically I actually, I actually, recorded it on on this app called otter that transcribes stuff so i could see exactly what he said because i knew it was and then i and i was like okay so this is he it was he got everybody to come into agreement with him wow and i'm like i i put up a post saying basically telling people repent if you inadvertently came into agreement with this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because this ain't wow I, you got I, to send that to me i'm not gonna tell you the rest of, i'll tell you offline Mm -hmm. what else was revealed to me about that situation but it was very it was re it was not good yeah yeah it was really bad and that song that everybody's sharing everybody doing their reels to it that he has i think it's called praise god or something like that or everybody mm -hmm. doing they were in it, it um it's a it's a lady's voice at the beginning of it and she's like um talking about darkness and saying it won't always be light or something like that she it sounds kind of creepy but mm -hmm. everybody's using that because it's it's called the title of it seems like it's something for god or whatever mm -hmm. but i went and looked up the lyrics mm -hmm. to wow. that song because you can't really tell what they're saying yeah yeah and it is definitely not a song yeah. for the it's got curse words in it all kind of curse words in it and he's literally at the end alluding to I'm going to send it to you. 
Yeah. And that's the problem. Right. People, hmm, this is the problem with not hearing the voice of the Lord for yourself. So Con Kanye or anybody else who claims they know the Lord and, you know, have come to Jesus and all of that, you can tell the fruit of a person, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? If they are yeah. a good tree or if they are Right. If they got tree. bad, right. If they tree is rotten. Right. So if you don't, and this is the problem, especially with Christians. If you don't know the word of the Lord for yourself. Yes. And the only way you can get a rhema word from the Lord is from the logos word. The logos is the written word. The, the rhema word. is the, 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 the revelation that you get from the logos word. So you don't have a revelation of the word for yourself if you can't hear the lord for yourself right you're gonna be you you're gonna you're gonna come across false prophets i think I yes up a there's so many a of couple them. of weeks ago that that, that more pro, more false prophets are coming and They're there's coming. a lot of them sitting right here right now yeah and 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 if you don't if you can't differentiate if you don't have the discerning of spirits we're talking about the gifts mm -hmm. of the spirit <clears throat> if you don't have these things excuse me you're going to be you fooled can't tell like everybody else cuz you won't be able to tell if you don't have the gift if you don't if you can't discern spirits yeah you won't be able to tell if the person is still under the anointing yeah we can go back to Saul Saul started off God was with him his hand was on him then yeah. one day the Lord was not with him and no one knew it and he was still the king the person will still be sitting in position they may have started off under God's under being in God's will and the Lord's hand was on them and then if they start veering left you don't know if you don't if you don't yeah. have a word for yourself you won't know if they don't went off the rails and you still following them you don't yeah. want to be with Saul after David was anointed in his spot but David just ain't took position yet and you still following Saul Chief. this is what people will be doing with these pastors now yep. just because they was anointed five years ago don't mean that they're still under the anointing now if they are if they didn't left and lord took his hand off of them that's it right there people right there. will argue you down yep like, they get they become that's... loyal to the leader and not they, loyal to I, the idolatry lord. it's idolatry bottom line you didn't bottom you line. worship the pastor child yep you supposed yep. to worship and people Jesus. that will go to bat for the and i don't and there's nothing wrong with that you, <laughs> if <laughs> long as they still good <laughs> 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 like I, I need for you to discern what the preacher just said. Pre some preachers be preaching a whole bunch of stuff and ain't said a word. Kyle, you listen, like? I just watch somebody. That joint sound good. People will do a whole sermon, mm -hmm. be talking an hour and a half yep. without no scripture. Yep, yep. And people like if 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 they have the gift of 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 um, oratory, mm -hmm. if they have that gift. Then it's like, oh, he anointed. Preach it, Pastor. Preach it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, listen, if no, the pastor gives you nothing. words every single week and you feel good every time, that's a problem too. Because how if come your, your feelings you ain't never hurt. get no conviction? Come on. Some of that stuff they say should make you run away. <laughs> if you always feel good when you leave, yeah. you need another church, child. Come on. Come on. Because Come I know on. it's certain stuff I'd be like, ooh, like yep. it, it's supposed to, because the Lord is trying to grow you, heal yep. you, get you to a place of repentance. So if everything makes you feel good, you obviously ain't realizing none of the stuff that's wrong with you. Yep. Yep. The the gospel is offensive. It is. People be like, I don't think it's, I'm like, it ain't me. I'm just, this one, look, I'd be like, this, this look, what the saying. Jesus <laughs> said it. Right that's what Jesus has said. He said it. That's not what Mila said. Look, I didn't say it. That's red letter Bible. Right there. <laughs> I ain't say it. <laughs> Just the like Jesus said he came to offensive. Jesus said he came to divide. Come on. He said I came with a sword. He did. He, he came said, Y'all, y'all all them people that keep saying peace, 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 peace. No, 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 no. I came with a sword. He that's came with he came with the government on his back. He came to establish a kingdom. Didn't he come into the into the temple and flip the tables off? He, he did. Hey, baby girl. He, he flipped did. the table. He was. <laughs> <laughs> he came in there. <laughs> yeah, you said the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, baby. I'm like, y'all better open that Bible, child. Come on.
come on, righteous anger. We got righteous anger, but sin not. Righteous yes. anger, but sin not. Yes, girl. We got to get our, the bottom line. We got to get our lives together. We got to figure it out. And he has yes. given us his word to figure it out. He has mm -hmm. given us Holy Spirit. He sent the gift of the Holy Spirit. And do you know Such what he had gift. to sacrifice to even send us to, that to gift? Give he us sacrificed that. His, his life. life. To give us the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we can be led, so that we can get insight. Like as Christians, we need to be leading technology. We need to be leading, right. you know what I'm saying, in the marketplace. We need yes. to be leading in our uh, respective fields. We need to be leading whatever sphere of influence that we have. We should be leading in that space. We should be. Yep. 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 Playtime is over. It's over. If the pandemic ain't tell you nothing now, playtime is over. Well, most people didn't get to find out nothing from the pandemic because they just been running scared the whole time listening to CNN. <laughs> we ain't gonna get into that because that's another two hours. But baby, but baby. people were supposed to be running to the Lord, child, and they was running to CNN straight in fear. Mm hmm. And that is nothing but the enemy. Yeah. Mm hmm. That is nothing but the enemy. He has mm -hmm. not given us a spirit of fear, but of a sound what? Mind. mind. Mm -hmm. And the enemy is coming after that mind. Honey, he won't it. And he got a lot of them. Because I'm like, it's like a, the real pandemic is anxiety. I It's Ooh. like so many Depression, people. I'm like, why are anxiety, everybody so anxious? Fear. Yep. And suicide. Yep. I, so many kids killing themselves. I'm like, didn't nobody kill? I don't remember anyone that I knew ever killing themselves when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I was 10 years old when I got the first inclination to commit suicide. Mm. I was 10 years old. I was living a happy life. I was kicking it with my family. That I was, was a definitely child. a spirit. Like yep. nothing but the enemy. Yeah, nothing that was but nothing the enemy but, yep. in my ear. Mm -hmm. I was 10 years old. You hear me? Mm hmm So the enemy comes at, that's why kids get molested. That's why kids get, you know what I'm saying? All of these traumas that are happening to these kids is because if you don't get healed as an adult, if you don't get healed in those spaces over those they kids, get to enter the kids, a some, messed up adult. Well, the other thing too is some of this, these spirits that's in the kids is because of their parents. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, but, you can't even get a, a spirit cast out of a kid till you get the parent to get right. Yeah, yeah. They're not covering the. They're not covering. Yeah, the and yeah. I can tell you when I started, when I, when my spiritual gifts started to be activated, and I became one with the Holy Spirit, my children's gifts started becoming activated. Yeah, yeah. My oldest one started having dreams. Like he, he has dreams and visions. Yeah. Like, um, I know Milo Rose. Myla Rose from the from when she was first born, I remember looking like she was a preemie and she was she was she was thirty four I had her at thirty four weeks. And she literally I looked at her and I was like I was kind of like almost a little bit scared because I could see that she it was like she was like I don't know how to explain it. She wasn't a baby. <laughs> it was like she had, it was I don't know how to explain it, but I would look at her eyes and be and just be like, wow, like it was like power. Mm. Yeah. Like, but, but when I got, when I got myself in tune with the Holy Spirit, it opened up my kids' spiritual gifts. Yeah. Wow. Come on. So we, when we're doing something, we're wondering why our kids are acting this way, doing this, doing that. And it's like, you listen. Yeah. Children are fruit. Come on. My kids are fruit from my tree. Come on. People don't be wanting to hear this, but your kids are fruit from your tree. Come on. So then you'll be all trying to make them better by doing something to the fruit. If you then put off a piece of bad fruit, you can't turn it into good fruit by just doing something to the fruit. That's it. You, you have to get to the tree. Come on. So See? if you are trying to figure out why, I don't know why they doing that. I don't know why they're doing it. They can't, they, they're fruit from your tree. That's good. And you need to get your roots straight and you need to get your tree healthy so that you start putting off good fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. people don't understand that there'll be kids be in their twenties and they're like, I don't know what to do with them. Da, 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 da. I'm telling you, you get right with the Lord. First of all, if you get yourself in the right standing with the Lord, 
you get your spiritual armor on, you get suited and booted, and you mm -hmm. get your breastplate intact, mm -hmm. you could, if nothing else, you can intercede for them, and with a spouse and children, you can put your armor on them. Come on. That's good. But you can't do nothing to help them while the Lord gets to them if you ain't in right standing with if them either. If you aren't in right standing, that's good. Literally, I'm like, when people be coming in like, my dog, my husband, my so-and-so, I'm like, listen, for a spouse, you literally can pray like it's you for them. Yep. So if you get yourself good, that can work for you and your spouse until while the Lord get to working on them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you got children as little, that's your, that's your, you, yes, you need to work on yourself to get yeah. that healed up. Yeah, that's your responsibility. You are the covering for them. Yes, you got to get that right with yourself. Until their right? frontal cortex come into play. It's your responsibility. Yep. But nobody wants to hear that. And they don't want to do that part. Yep. I'm like, I when I'm working on me, my kids know, like, just like with them, because I'm like, Bennett is 10. Well, he's going to be 11 on the 12th. Mm -hmm. In a few years, he's going to be he gonna be able to make his own messes with the Lord. Right. Right? So I'm trying to teach them now, when they wake up in the morning, they have to read their Bible before they do anything. That's good. That's good. You're going to start your day with the Lord. And guess what they do before they go to bed? When we get Come off on. here, we're going to have Bible study. Come on. I was on y'all Bible study the other day. I listen, that. I, was, kid, I was like, look at these kings. I was like, I cannot. He impressed me so much. Like, he knew so much stuff. And I was like, Bennett, how do you know all that stuff? And he was like, I was listening to your lives. <laughs> I was like, and this is what this I, up a child he completely in the I, that and go. it completely blew my mind. I'm like, cause I know I, I'm doing stuff a lot, like and they have to take care of their sister, all that stuff when I'm doing these different things or whatever. But they understand and they and I and they know like when they get into a bind, they they know to pray. Yeah. Wow. They know to ask God. I'm like, ask God. I'll tell them, go pray. Go ask God. They see me make decisions for our family with the Lord. Yeah. They see, yeah. so it's not like they're going to have to learn this. Like, I had to learn this. Yeah. This is just going to be in them. This is what they just naturally do. It's natural. Bradley it's will natural. be like, like that's nature. demonic. <laughs> Up and out. <laughs> Bradley will be like, no, we got to go. That's demonic. Turn the TV. That's demonic. If, if something come on the radio, he'll hurry up and turn it down. No parts. I don't need He'll no be like, parts. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Come on. That's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm talking about. People think that when you say train up a child in a way that they should go, that it just means teaching them, you know, good versus bad or, you know what I'm saying? Teaching them to do good things. And it's like, no, they need to understand this word. They, they need to understand this word Jesus. and how to follow Jesus. I want my children to yeah. know how to follow What does Jesus. it look like practically? Right. How are you, how you, how are you applying it? this to your situation? How are you applying this to your life? And most adults don't know how to apply the word. They, I was just about to say that. They don't know how to do it. I literally, they'd be like, well, I don't know. What do I, what do I read? What do I do? How do I do? Cause they'll read it. I mean, you know, I've had like, I've had like maybe three or four pastors yeah. come to my practice for console for lipo or something like that. And mm -hmm. we'll end up in this kind of conversation and they're mm -hmm. and they're really needing help because they are standing in this pulpit preaching this word mm -hmm. every week except they don't know how to apply it to their lives yeah they literally don't know how to do it and i'm like and i'm like still i'm like okay lord how you got me you got me telling them but look look jesus his disciples weren't none of them were learned men yeah None they, of weren't them. The, they weren't the religious leaders of the they day. They were not. Yeah. Yep. You're right. People miss that. People yeah. like, oh, I, I, you know, that's, and they idolize yeah, none the of them pastors. Were. They idolize yeah. expecting, and when they fall, they have a problem yeah. because they put this pastor on this, this pedestal. And it's like, well, did he teach you how to walk out the word for yourself? Did he teach you to follow Jesus for yourself? Did he, did right. he give you application? Because that's the key. Because people don't know how. I'm like, listen. And people be so like, just like, I'm like, when I, like, I literally, I'm like, it says it, it says this. So that's what I, I got to do that. I can't do this because that goes against that. And they're like, but, well, no, I see it, but there's no but. There's no but. And until he said stop, what he said. He, he said, said what he, he said. He said what he said. He said what he said. He said what he said. 
That's it. You can't, you can't, you can't sugarcoat that. You can't shift it. You can't. He said what he said. That's it. And it is your decision to, to follow that. Or not. And when you make that decision to follow that, there's fruit that comes with that. There's increased responsibility that comes mm -hmm. with that. There's increased power that comes with that. The Bible says that when Paul, uh, when he had his moment on Damascus, he said right away he began preaching the gospel of Jesus. Some mm -hmm. of us get delivered from stuff and can't even open up our mouths, but right away he started mm -hmm. preaching the gospel. So when he started preaching the gospel, the Bible says that he increased in power as mm -hmm. he released and proved what mm -hmm. Jesus did. Mm -hmm. You know who else started uh, ministry right away? After they were delivered. Who's that? Legion. Ha! He did. He went straight to the town. Legion, he wanted to go with the Lord. He wanted to sit at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus was like, no, I no. need you to go and, t and tell everybody what yep. I did. Yep. And so the same people who ran yep. Jesus off after Woman that. at the well. When he came back, yep. When he came back, they were ready to receive him because of, because of Legion saw. testimony. That's it. It was a, it was immediate. Yeah, people think, oh, I gotta get myself right. I, I've been, I've been healed. He healed me of that, but I gotta get myself right before I can release the gospel. No, 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 no. Your faith increases. Your spiritual muscles increases. Your gifts increases. The power in the Lord increases as you testify. You ain't gotta do nothing but testify about what He did for you. You ain't, they ain't no, 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 they ain't no, no, none of the word. Right. You right. Yep. They ain't know nothing about the word. They ain't know nothing. About the, well, they started to learn it eventually. Yeah. Right. Because that's but what they didn't know me. the word to release yep. the gospel. The gospel is what Jesus did for them. The healing that they received. Because the Bible says that when they receive healing, when devils are cast out, the kingdom has come. They have experienced the kingdom of God. Correct. That's so good. Oh, wow. That's so good. I just taught that today. <laughs> I just uh, what you teach, Where your class is at? I, I, I want to be in the Holy Spirit class. Girl, come on in. We just started the School of Discipleship. It started January 1st. Oh, to send me the link. Mm -hmm. I surely will. Yeah, I, I, like, I like stuff like that. Girl, yeah. We got to teach people how to live right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only. That's, that's what's the gonna only happen thing. We're and that's what we're supposed to do as Christians. We're supposed, supposed to, to make disciples. That's right. That make disciples. It's yeah. a ripple effect. It's a it's a mul it's a multiplication effect. Yep. That's what's gonna happen in twenty twenty two. Yeah. It's gonna be a lot of that. Folks gonna be running to Jesus the same way after Legion uh did hit, went and told everybody, and then when Jesus came back, they gladly received him. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. The, the way 2022 starts off is going to set people up to run to Jesus. Come on. And then we're going to teach them. We're going to be like, we come on, have, come on. They're going to know where to run to. Point. And we have to always point to Jesus. Mm -hmm. We have to gonna know always to run point to, to Jesus. To learn how to get over, to roll with them. And then they're yeah. going to start teaching. That's, what the, that's what's going to happen in 2022. That's what it's supposed to be. That revival that everybody been talking about. He gonna he gonna he gonna chase everybody. Come on, but it starts like, with your sphere you? of influence. See, that's what people miss. It. Like people, uh, people on here are supposed to be writing books. The Lord has called them to books. The Lord has called you all to certain things, and it's not you know it is not this mass following. It, that mass following crap is over. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, you follow one person, and that that's over. You dominate in the sphere of influence that the Lord has given you. That should not deter you from doing what the Lord has called you to do. So it is going to be this ripple effect of these small cohorts of people releasing the word, and it's just going to spread out from there. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Like that, I, I, it, it's going. It has to happen this way because mm -hmm. this is exactly what Jesus did. This is what Jesus started off. He started off with the twelve disciples. Though then he sent out the seventy-two. Mm -hmm. Then there was the 120 in the upper room on mm -hmm. the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And then it was the 3,000. 
and mm. then it was the 5,000. You hear what I'm saying? And yes. then, they got, then the church got scattered. Right. And they began to preach around the world. Like, that, that's, the, that's the model that Jesus gives us. So imagine if everybody took that model, you as a Christian, would, you are would. a disciple of Christ, you began to make your disciples, you send those out, and then there's the multiplication effect. Yes. We That's have to have happen. those nituses. Right. Yep, yep. Right? Yep. And it's not, it's not just, it's not just preaching the gospel, but it's preaching the gospel with power. Proving that Jesus like the book, like work. in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, he's he's coming back for his Acts two church. It's about to be an Acts church. My Come Lord. on, it's about to be a book of Acts kind of revolution, mm -hmm. and it's gonna start in twenty twenty two. It started off. It's it started now. Started. It's smoldering. It's, it's gonna yeah. take off. It's gonna be like wildfire Come in twenty twenty two. After this Come next on. thing happens, everybody gonna rush, and it's Come gonna. On. Come on. Yeah, it's like smoldering now. The little nituses are like smoldering because yeah. that's what you you and i are a part yeah. of that yeah yep. it's like he's got people positioned in all these unlikely places i can't tell or every almost every person that comes see me in concert was like i wasn't expecting this hmm. that part that part i wasn't jesus expecting that mm -hmm. jesus showed up he's the kingdom mm -hmm. has come you mm -hmm. have experienced the kingdom of god mm -hmm. and that's what he came to do he came to establish a, not a religion he came to establish a kingdom, a government. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is so good. Girl, we've been on here two hours. Girl, pray this <laughs> out, child. My daughter over here, she done made a pallet over. You hear? Oh, pray us out. Bless us with a prayer. A holy Spirit. Yes. So, Father God, we just glorify you. We thank you. We honor you. We lift you up. We magnify your name. You are such a holy God. We thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for giving us you. We thank you, Lord, for giving us Jesus, the sacrifice that you made on Calvary for us. We thank you, Father God, that we shall receive everything that you have paid for. We thank you, Father God, that we have now been awakened. Our yes. spirit man has has been awakened yes. and our souls shall be healed. We will work out our own salvations. We will see the glory of the Lord. We thank you, Father God, that if we are Christians, if we say that we love you, then we are to follow your commandments. We are to go after you like nothing else. We are to seek the kingdom first. Father, forgive us. Forgive us for not putting you first. Forgive us for uh, setting up idols, setting up things yes. above you, setting forgive up us, our man. jobs before you, setting up our health before you, setting up our family uh, above you. We repent right now in the name of Jesus and we ask for your forgiveness, Father God. We pray right now, Father God, that anybody that you highlight to us, even now in this moment, highlight to us anyone that we need to forgive. Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you give us the strength, you give us your Holy Spirit power to forgive those people. And we pray, Father God, that even um, as our souls prospers, that our health would prosper, that our bodies would prosper, that our finances would prosper, that our family uh, life would prosper, that our relationships will prosper, that we will be about the business of Jesus and yes. we shall go forth and release your gospel yes. everywhere we go. Not just uh, uh, the, the good news, but the good news is that you are king and that you yes. are Lord of Lords and that you are you sit on high and you said that you sit us in heavenly places with you. So we pray, Father God, that your Holy Spirit come. Give us your power. Give us your glory so that we are able to see that manifest here on earth. We glorify you and we thank you and we thank honor you. you. In Jesus' mighty name Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, honey. That prayer was no joke. Phew. Thank you so much. This was so this was so good. Yeah. I'm sorry y'all about all the interruptions, but you know, I'm a mama. Amen. amen. You, you better amen. say amen. That's right. You hear him say amen. You better say amen. Even my amen. Rose reading her Bible. She got my Bible and she gets to saying the numbers and letters she's seeing. I'm like, that's what we start with you. Come on. Come on. You did, you, did you say amen? You say amen. 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 Bye. 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 Bye.
Push the button right there, my rose. Mm. See you later. Push the X. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs>